That's what I need. A loaf of grits. You know, one of these days you're going to be dumped for a microwave. Rena, come on, I'm worn a out. For you, oh, Rena, not again. Come on, I'm tired. Come on. Rena, Rena. Come on. I'm not worn out. Ooh. Not even. What? What happened? <laughs> come on, nothing happened. Sit up. What's that smell? Hey, well, someone's I on fire. What's burning? I mean, that's not a smell. That's an aroma. Come on. Is it an aroma? See? Yes, I want you to see what I fixed for you. For me? Huh? Oh, my Rena. My own two little hands. You had a bed, had a bed all by yourself. Honey, I've been. You up actually for... beat me up. My, what am I dreaming? What? Honey, I've been up for ages. What do you think of the flowers? Oh, look at them. You must have picked them yourself. What happened, to poor little thorns? Darn, Max. Now, come on, honey. It is February. Oh, honey. Hey, hey. I, I, I like them. They got uh, uh, character. Yeah. Oh, what else we got in here? Look at this now. Oh, we got coffee and uh, and uh, eggs and, and ham and my favorite biscuits with gravy. Look at that. Mm. Honey, those aren't biscuits. They're grits. A grit. They burn too. <laughs> That's a grit. Max. <laughs> That's a grit. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Hey, no, I know. I, honestly, I like them <laughs> thick like that. <laughs> Come on. No, they, uh, that's good. They're, they're, they're good. And, mm, mm, look at this. Look at this. Uh, it's red eye gravy. Mm. Boy, I grew so. Nothing mm. too good for my lord or master. Mm. Honey. Yeah. If you look carefully, you will see that um, this is a message. A message? Was this what you, uh, what you call gravy, Graham? Yeah. <laughs> the gravy is silly and me. Max, I love you. I don't ever want us to fight again, I promise. Mm -hmm. We took care of that last night, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I, I yeah. want you to know that, that this is settled once and for all. The first thing I did this morning when I got up was that I called... I woke up Beth, and I reminded her that we ought to get an early start in closing up the house this morning. And you know what else I told her? What? That after today, I thought that she should go back to work for Vicky because I wasn't keeping count. Oh. You see? You yeah. see? I'm burning all of my bridges. I've decided you're the husband. You start picking how we're going to live. I'm going to be the closest thing you ever saw to a perfect model wife. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Dick, you do me proud. Oh. Honey, mm -hmm. the name alone is worth all the burnt bridges in the world to me. Oh, yeah. And I guess I can stand a few burnt grits now and then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, come on. Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie.
your day. matching ski hats. It's cold outside. You want my feet to freeze? You would actually wear these to work? It's my day off today. <laughs> I forgot it. I'm, I'm off. It's my day. I only work on weekends. Well, then why get up at all? Why not just stay and sleep? I have laundry to do later. Do it here. My clothes are at home. Bring them here. You're right. You know what I should do? I should go home and I should get my toothbrush and my socks and my pillow and, and my clothes and something to put them in. Plus half the month's rent. Check. What do you say, partner? Deal? Anymore. She's remarried to Mr. Decker. Oh. Is she home? No, she lives out in the Marshall Ranch now. It's about an hour or so out of town. Oh, boy. She's coming in today if you want to drop by later. Well, actually, I'm looking for Mrs. Bancroft. Mrs. Bancroft? Yeah, she, she's Mrs. Wheeler now, Mrs. Alex Wheeler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I used to work for her in Bay City. Well, that's nice, huh? <laughs> so... Could you help me find Mrs. Bancroft, Wheeler? Uh, last I heard, they were living on a yacht. Who died? Pardon? A jerk. Oh, uh, Mrs. Decker is closing up the house. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Wheeler are just moving into a house, but I don't know their address. It wasn't Mrs. Wheeler expecting you? No, I'm a surprise, but I'm not going to be much of a surprise if I can't find her. Well, her son would know. Where is he? Well, he lives over on Westheimer. He runs the Western Art Gallery. I'll give you the address. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just take a left when you get up here to the corner. Will my cab you... driver be able to find this? Oh, oh, yeah, sure. I thought you were driving. Oh, no. I hope I don't ever have to drive her anyplace. These freeways scare me to death. <laughs> I'll get used to them. <laughs> I suppose I better worry about finding her and then worry about the freeways. Good luck. Well, what's your name? Beth. Thank you, Beth, very much. I didn't come to buy anything. Well, I'm sorry, we're still closed. I came to see Mr. Carrington. I'm sorry, he's still sleeping. Oh, well, well, I'll just have to wait until he wakes up then. Well, miss, you'll just have to wait somewhere else. As long as I'm here, I could give you a hand. This place Lady, is Lady, listen, yes. whoever you are, would you please just get out of here? Is this rice? What's it doing all over your table? You are not listening to me. Out! I, it's imperative that I talk to Mr. Carrington, and I, I can't go until then. And if I were you, I would get this place cleaned up because you're going to be in very big trouble if you don't. You are going to be in big trouble if you don't leave right now. I thought all Texans were down home. Oh, friendly. you are trying my patience. Why are you screaming? Because I want you out that door right now. Hey, oh, Dennis, here. there's a mad woman down here. Dennis! Here. It's me! Vivian! Hey! <laughs> 
great to see you. Great to see you, too. You don't look like a Texan. Well, how'd you get here, anyway? By plane? Mr. Wheeler called me up. He asked me to come here, and he sent me a ticket. Wheeler, huh? Yeah, I was supposed to, he's supposed to send somebody to pick me up at the airport. But I thought, I better get here early, because breakfast being the most important meal of the day, you know, I didn't think she's going to fix it. <laughs> Dennis, who is this person? Don't you call me that. I'm sorry, uh, Paige. This is Vivian Garo. Mom's a... Uh, Domestic engineer. Domestic engineer. Uh, and Vivian, this, as of yesterday, is Paige Marshall Carrington, my wife. You married your maid? So luxurious. It's all yours, Mrs. Wheeler. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Wheeler. <laughs> it's wonderful to see all of my things. And the portrait. <laughs> now, if you are looking for the second half of your surprise, then just forget it. I'm having it flown in. Flown in? Gracious, what could that be? Is it something for the house? Yes. Is it green? Do you water it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> you have no intention of telling me, do you? No. Then I suppose I'll have to wait. You're sure I'll like it? Oh, I'm sure of that. You are miraculous. Hmm. You really like the renovation, oh, huh? I can't you tell? <laughs> oh, you know, it, it even reminds me a little of my suite in Bay City. The minute I walked in, I felt right at home. That was my intention. My first home. It doesn't seem possible, does it? Hmm. Well, it's not a wish. It's not a daydream. After all the mistakes, the hiding, the terror, to be here in the quiet of our own house. Mm. I love you. I love you. You know, in all my imaginings through the years, whenever I conjured up the home you and I might have had, there was always someone with us. Mm -hmm. Our son, Dennis. Yes. I would have liked to have had dozens of sons and daughters. <laughs> I don't know about dozens. Two <laughs> or three, perhaps. Will you settle for just me? Yes. But what about Dennis? He is your son. Now, I know I, I, I promised not to tell him because of Elliot. And I kept my promise. But there's no reason to keep it a secret any longer. Can't we tell Dennis who his real father is? Hey, honey. How about some more of that uh, real fine coffee of yours, huh? How were the eggs? Oh, they were, they were great. They were just great. Now, where'd you get that idea from? I don't know, Max. I mean, pate is simple. Why can't I scramble eggs? Well, I, I like them like that, really. I like them kind of dry like that. I do. We just have got to get us a new range. I mean, cooking on that dinosaur is like burning breakfast at the steak. That's all there's to it. New range, huh? I need nothing fancy, just four burners, a, a fan, and maybe an oven that doesn't think it's an incinerator. That's exactly what I'm talking about. What? What did I do? Sweet, I, I know you love me, but you got to stop thinking I got a, a, a bankroll as big as a cabbage in my back pocket. I mean, I can no more buy a new range than I could fly to the moon. Honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, honey, just a suggestion. Uh, how do you think I feel? Max, please, let's not fight uh, again. Just, just think, look at it my way. 
I mean, I, you know, I've, I've been in the prov providing business most of my life. Uh, I kept Ricky in shoes and uh, Elena in dresses. And as spoiled as that girl is, she never once asked me for something that I couldn't give her. I'm sorry. I can't change the way I've been raised any more than you can change the way you've been raised. Well, as long as you're trying, I... Isn't it shy? Yes, it does, honey. That was that was a real fine breakfast. Oh, it's uh, a horrible breakfast. Hey, wait a minute now. You assault my wife's cooking, huh? Come on, look at me. Oh, Max, I love you, honey. I just, I just wanted to be so right, you know. You will be. You will be. Now, just don't you be harder on yourself than I am, all right? Now, you go on into town and take care of business at your house, and I'll be by later to help you bring back here what you need. Just don't make it too much, all right? We ain't got a mansion here. We don't want to crowd ourselves out. Give us a kiss. Mm. Wow. That'll last me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute now, hey. Go to work. Wait a minute, you can't. Uh -huh. Once you get me started like that, you can. Wait. Daddy, it's me. Oh, Rena. I hope you're not calling me from some motel, because I'd be mighty perturbed if you tell me that you haven't ironed out that squabble you were having with Max. No, Daddy, I'm here at the ranch, and everything is just fine for now. Well, what do you mean, for now? Daddy, I'm, um, I'm going into town today to close the house, and I was wondering if you could meet me there. I, I need your advice. I need your help, Daddy. Wouldn't be too bad, you know, Sam. You and me. Of course, you wouldn't want to rush things. Well, it's not like we're rushing things, actually. Sam, if you don't want it, you don't want it. Say no. No. Good. All right, fine. Fine. It isn't you I don't want. It's it's all these things that we said we wouldn't deal with. Such as? Well, if you moved in here, our three nights a week rule would be shot. True. Of course, not to be a pain, it already is. Well, it's not just that. It's It's... All those questions we swore we'd never ask, like, where have you been? How'd you get that lipstick on your collar? We've been interrogating each other. We would. I'm not arguing. Of course, we already have. We, we said we wouldn't. We promised we wouldn't, but we've been asking each other questions. Justin, you don't understand. I have a career. I cannot spend all morning looking for your socks. Sam, did I ask you to stay? Or doing your dishes or cleaning up after you, following you around with a vacuum cleaner. Why is it that every liberated woman thinks of a man as a lapdog? I am housebroken, Sam. I have been alone by myself for ten years or so. I haven't starved. I haven't strewn rack and ruin in my past. Justin, I... that's not the point. The whole, this whole thing is, is for Justin Marshall's convenience. So that he'll be near his pillow and his socks and his other conveniences. I feel like a toaster oven. So 
what do you want, Sam? Marriage? No. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I don't want to. Sam. Sam, there are many things that you are to me, but convenient isn't one of them. If my toaster oven gave me as much trouble as you do, I'd demand my money back. Oh, you say the sweetest thing. The, the reason I, I, uh, I want to be here is, uh, I, guess, I guess it, does, it doesn't make much sense, actually. Um, well, the, the word, the word doesn't mean much anymore, if, if, if it ever did. Um, but I, I was just exploring the, uh, the possibility that maybe, maybe I, I, uh, Love you. Oh. Maybe. You didn't know that. N no. Uh, uh -huh. Well, not exactly love. Ah. Well, well, now you do. Now I don't want to change your mind. You see, I. Uh, I, I just uh, brought it up to sort of. Uh, well, put my, uh, my, uh, my cards on the table. Justin. What? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't want to make you late for work. Oh, just this once. Unconscious with broom. All right, all right, thanks. The captain says Mom left the yacht this morning. Oh, I should go back to Mrs. Cook's? No, 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 no. Uh, her things are already being delivered to the, her new house here in town. Uh, you're going to need the address, Vivian. Okay. There you go. Thank you. I'll be there in a jiff. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, you may not be able to get in. You know? I mean, they weren't sure how long ago Mom left. Why don't you... Uh, why don't you just take the key and get in? Okay, thanks. Oh, uh, one more thing, Vivian. I didn't say anything to Mom about my wedding, all right? It's kind of a surprise. Oh, give me a break. I haven't even unpacked my stuff already. You're thrusting me into a compromising situation. Oh, please. For old time's sake. My lips are sealed. <laughs> Thank you. about half an hour before Mom knows everything. Uh, darling, maybe not even that long. Take a look at the society column. Former Houston socialite weds almost air. All the details about that are in this. I know, I know, Dennis, but we had to expect this sort of thing. I mean, anything involved with Alex's public gossip. Oh, come on, darling, look on the bright side, all right? I mean, there's no need to tell Iris right away, is there? She'll learn soon enough. So I think that you and I should just uh, close up shop and start working on that honeymoon. Someplace exotic. Mm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm. This, oh, I've got to take care of this. Dennis, what a time to go running to Mommy. Now listen, my mother's not going to interfere with us. She has her life and we have ours. Okay? But I, I can't go out of my way to her. Get dressed. Yes, sir.
No, Alex, I, I don't understand. I hope you know that I had better reasons than fear of Elliot for not publicly claiming Dennis my son. I assumed you didn't want Elliot to take Dennis from us. Well, how could he? Dennis wasn't mine. Elliot was right about that. He was there, he raised him. For a little while. Well, it's more than I could do. You gave him his life, Alex. That's not enough. There's more to fatherhood than that. I can't suddenly demand Dennis's affection based on the grounds of biological fact. Nothing could alienate him more. Well, he might resent it at first, but... I have to earn Dennis's respect by degrees, not by not laying ambush. All right. I suppose you know best. I just thought, well, there's so much room in this house. Look, I understand your disappointment. It's... It's not the way we pictured, but Dennis has grown up. And he can be our son now, but not our ward. You'd think I'd learn. Dennis reminds me incessantly. Witness our contretemps over Page Marshal. Of course, he's been saying he was grown since he was 12. Well, it's going to be very lonely in this big house when you are well enough that I can't keep you home. Now, I have an idea about that. I think it's time that we went down to the airport and picked up your surprise. Now? Mm -hmm. I didn't care. Who could be coming here? Well, there's one way to find out. No, no. Stay back. Keep away from the door. Vivian, you frightened us half to death. Don't you know what we've been through? Now, look. I will not put up with this sort of... Vivian? Well, aren't you glad to see me? <laughs> yes. No. Yes, I am. Vivian, I confess, I've missed you. I know. You do? Well, you told me so in all of your little notes. And that present you sent at Christmas, that was just lovely. Didn't you get my thank you note? Yes, Rena sent it to me. Oh, yeah, that's the address that I had for you. You just look beautiful, as usual. Oh, thank you, Vivian. <laughs> oh, forgive me. Vivian Garrow, my husband, Alex Wheeler. Well, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Wheeler. Welcome oh. to Houston, Vivian. Whatever possessed you to come to Houston to visit me? I'm not a visitor. I'm a surprise. Really? What do you think? Oh, I think it's oh, wonderful. Oh. oh, thank you both. <laughs> I thought you were booked on a later flight. Oh, uh, I was. I was. But I thought I would come early so I could fix your breakfast. Isn't that sweet? Breakfast for y'all. I mean, I've been studying in Texas. Um, practically bilingual. Studying? Where? On a TV. <laughs> And Rudy was helping me out a little. Oh, my, Rudy. How is he? <laughs> well, I'll tell you all about that later. <laughs> How about I fix some breakfast for you? How about some hominy grits and chili? Oh, a nice mm. omelet will do, Vivi. An omelet? Well, you can practice your Texas cooking later, all See. right? Where'd you get the key? Oh, I stopped by Mrs. Cook's house, and that's the only address that I had for you. Why don't you read this paper? I could discuss that with you later. Rita doesn't have a key to this house. Where's the kitchen? Dennis is the only one who has a key. Did you see him this morning? And, and, do you have chickens? Or do you have to buy your eggs? Vivian, you're hiding something. Oh. Uh... Well, feels like home already. Why am I doing that? You never needed reason. You always thought it was Dennis against me. Oh, you just pierce me to the quick, I think. Don't deny it. It's true. Now, did you or did you not? Well, what exactly do you mean by see? Did you lay eyes on him? Did he appear before you? Did you look upon his person? Well, what do you mean by his person? Oh, I get it. Paige Marshall was with him. Is that it? Well, he wasn't alone. He was single. He wasn't alone. He was single. Um, Vivian, I'd like to talk to Iris alone, please. What do you two know? I'll get that. Thanks, Vivian. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Oh, no.
Man, what a day. I am wet. <laughs> yes, sir. Good morning, boss. Man, I hope you appreciate the OT. You know, burn the overtime? I mean, I ain't trying to get rich off you or nothing like that. But yeah, uh, I, I got one right here. Page 12. Just as you got to admit, boy, I've been a hard-working man, and then some. Well, if I don't get home in time for my beauty rest, I'm going to hear from it from uh, Miss Marshall when I show up for work tonight. Yeah, she'd like to take my head off. Last time, she tried to dock me every half second I was late. Hold on a second. Hey, 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 Mutt, will you? Yeah, I see it. This right guy you hired, his employment form gives us a reference of Miss Marshall at the top of the world clock. Same one. Hey, uh, that, that battle axe you work for, her name Paige Marshall? <laughs> That's what I was telling you. And, uh, this dude she married, you know him, Dennis, uh, Carrington? Yeah, I know. Poor sucker. Yeah, same one. He knows me both. Put him on. Okay. Boss wants to ask you some questions about him. The boss? The dude from California? Mm -hmm. Well, how come? Hey, what do I know? Maybe he's a friend of the family. Here, get on the horn. I was hoping you'd be more gracious. You couldn't even tell me? A letter? A phone call? Even the most distant relatives get postcards before the fact. What would you have said? Congratulations? Good luck? We knew better, Mom. That's why I went to the courthouse to take care of everything. Minus the hassle. Iris, it may seem impulsive, but we've been engaged for some time now. A month. If only we'd known you wanted to come. I don't know. Perhaps we just weren't thinking. Oh, you were. I'm certain of that. But Dennis, how could you marry this grasping opportunist? Iris. It's true, and you know it. I think that's enough. Oh, come on, Mom. You like to imagine that I'm something special. Well, I'm not. It's a miracle any woman would even want to marry me. I've got no more than the shirt on my back and probably never will have. Whether you believe this or not, I think it's very important that I say it. I did not marry Dennis for the shirt on his back. Silk or burlap. I love him. Oh, please, don't pose for my sake. Alex, you seem to recognize that. Thank you very much. May I just say that your motives for marriage are immaterial. You're both adults. You can make that decision. Oh, for once we agree about something. How about that? But I'd also like to say that I think that it was thoughtless and cruel to marry without letting your mother know. What if she'd found out from some stranger, read in the paper? The paper? Oh, that is the last straw. Oh, come on, Mom. I didn't know the papers were You gonna... intended to hurt me. You, you rushed into this just to spite me. No. I did it because I need someone to love. Someone who would love me back for what I am, and not because they can own me, or worse yet, coerce me into some kind of life I don't want. The only person who ever treated me like that and loved me that way was my father. And you did everything you could to destroy that, didn't you, Mom? Well, I'm not going to let you destroy it anymore, and if that means our paths don't cross, fine, our paths don't cross. Now you're threatening me. No, I'm not threatening you. I'm defending myself. Paige, say goodbye. Maybe a while. Dennis. Dennis! You can't do this. Can I? Just watch. Paige. Enough to get up a head of steam about whatever you got in the making. What? Now listen, honey, don't try to manipulate your daddy. You listen to me. If you got the notion that you're going to press me into service to help you lay the iron to Max Decker the way you did to Kevin, you better scrub that idea right now because I'm not interested. You think that I want you to help me launch some sneak attack, is that it? Don't give me the hurt act either. 
Now listen, I know which way the wind is blowing. I am no fool. I saw this coming. You go off alone with him, and you are on my doorstep in the middle of the night. And the next morning, there's a phone call from a sad little voice. I'm sorry, Rena. It's just all too familiar. You really don't think that I'm capable of playing it fair? <laughs> well, maybe we better forget it. Daddy went to go on back to the office. Why else would you telephone me if it wasn't about Max? It was. I wanted you to hog tie him so I could brand my name on his back. Baby. I said nothing. I was afraid of losing him, Daddy. And if I think, and I think if I do, it's going to ruin me. Well, I thought everything was fine. What happened? I'm trying, Daddy. I'm trying, but I, I'm going to let him down. I can't even stand to think about it. I, I get it. I get this feeling in the, in the pit of my stomach like I'm being turned into stone from the inside out. Well, I can't be her. Whatever, whatever it is that he wants, I, I can't be her. What he sees and what I am just don't match up. Daddy, you can't keep me cooped up in that little house with nothing to do but, but clean and cook and wait for him to come on home. Honey, it's as hard for me to say this as it is for you to hear it. But you made your bed. I know. I thought I could make it work because I wanted him so much. I love that man, Daddy. And I'm... And I'm hurting him. I'm going to make him feel small and useless and failed every time he looks at me. I'm going to demand things from him that he'll never be able to give me without my even opening my mouth. He'll just look at me and he'll know. And if we hang in there long enough, I'm going to start using my own money to get what I want. And then he'll leave me. Or maybe he'll let me because he loves me so much. And that'll kill him inch by inch. Damnation. It's what your mother said was going to happen. She was, a, she was so afraid of this. It, it's just what you said. I turned my head and looked the other way. It's why I tried to get him to take the money at the well, Redner's again. he won't take the money, Daddy. Don't you understand that? He's got to support me. He won't. He just won't. There's no other way with him. If there was only some way that he could get the money on his own. Dennis, wait. Now come on back here and let's talk about this thing. Something else you wanted to say before we leave? Yes. I think you're being too hard on your mother and father. I mean, your stepfather. Now, come on. None of us sees 2020 all the time. Well, hey, Cuz, maybe, maybe we have rushed into things a little fast. Maybe your decision not to tell your mother was a mistake. Mistake? You're the one who wanted now, to hold darling, it. now don't get me wrong. I don't regret anything. What I mean is that... What? Paige means is that if you want your mother to understand your elopement, then perhaps you should try and understand her shock. Yes. Yes, that's what I mean. And you can't blame her for being surprised. It's not the surprise. It's the scolding, the finger-waving, the disapproval of everything. I can only take so much, Mom. I know. Approval or disapproval is beside the point. The fact is, is that you're married. Nothing can change that. Now, if you'll give us a chance to catch our breath, we'll accept it. That's all I want. I don't need your seal or your blessing for anything. Just acceptance. Don't you know there's nothing you can do that could make me love you less? I wish you would love me a little less. 
respect me a little more. The two should go hand in hand. I may have to be reminded, but I'll try to remember that. Oh, good. Everything's mended. Now the pact is sealed, and I think we should have a reception for the both of you. Here. I'd like everyone to know that we're a family who respects each other's choices, hmm? Mom. Oh, don't look that way. You're married. Let us fuss over you a little. Would you like that, Paige? Yes, I would. And I think it's very gracious of you to offer. I know this won't happen overnight, but uh, I would like you both to come to know me, maybe even love me as a daughter. Breakfast is served, y'all. Would you join us, son? I'm famished. How about you, Paige? Yes. Not a bad show. But I hope you don't think you fooled me. I don't know what you're talking about, Arvis. But I do know one thing. I'll never underestimate you. No, my dear. You'd better not. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. get a chance to do it all over again. Oh, Poodle, what can I do to that old cabin? Put fresh hay on the floor? <laughs> well, I don't exaggerate. You're not moving to the poor house. Daddy, that cabin was never meant to set up permanent housekeeping in. It was just a place to go and rough it once in a while so you'd feel good about Houston when you got back home. It's a wonderful house. It's quiet. You're far away from, from, from the freeways and from traffic jams. It's a dandy place to get back in touch with things, including yourself. Oh, yeah, I can touch everything in that cabin by just sitting in the middle of the floor. There's no place to raise a family in Malden, I know. But... You mean, uh, more than just the two of you? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that myself? I, I, I have gotten so used to you and Kevin without children, I, I just forgot. You see, Daddy, Max and I really do need more space. I don't want to raise a family in a stable. It's not my style. Don't have to twist my arm. If I, if I could just think of some way to put it right, I'm sure I could get him to go along with what I got in mind. Oh, honey. Uh, here. You sit down now. Huh? <laughs> Grandchildren, huh? Baby, I think I got me an idea. Mm -hmm. 
Francis. Starring Beverly McKenzie. Jeff, it really was sweet of you to take me all the way over here in the middle of the day. Jane, what's a brother for? Well, even so. Well, well, look, you know, I'm all turned around now. Anyways, working in that club, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, like morning for me now. Yeah. Time does turn things around lately. So, how's the dynamic duo doing? Oh, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. The crowd seems to like us okay, but I'll tell you, keeping up with Elena, though, I mean, it's you know, drive me to drink. <laughs> I know you're worried about Elena. Yeah, well, she's a good kid. She's going to be all right. Look, I'm, I'm more worried about you and Barrett than I am about her. Why me? Jenny, come on, all right? Something's wrong here. Something is really wrong. It's not just Barrett being back. You know, I got the same idea from Courtney. Of course, she won't tell me anything about it because she prefers to hide behind that white coat and all this medical mumbo-jumbo about ethics. Does, uh, does Barrett know what it is? No. Uh, there's nothing for him to know. Jeb, would you wait and come back a little later? He's still asleep. I want him to rest, okay? Goodbye, Jenny. Ryan. Oh, don't, Jenny. Please don't leave. No, nothing on earth could pull me away from you if I knew I could keep you happy, but... Every time I look at you, it's I just the strain. It's the strain of being pulled in two different directions. Look, uh, I've been wandering around all my life, and uh, until I met you, I know you dreamed about uh, me staying here and us living on the land and having our own place. I dreamed about that too, about having you as my wife. Raising our children. But now I see that's just a dream. None of it's going to happen. I can't do any more than I've done. Okay, then I'm the one that has to act. By leaving me? I don't see any other choice. Is this, is this the last time we'll be together? It has to be. Looks like that tanker in the South Atlantic might make it. It's close to schedule now. Well, that's good to hear. What happened? Weather lighting up? Yeah, Captain LaCrue took it through a pretty bad storm. They were thinking about pulling the crew, but the captain hung in there and they made it. We've got some pretty good people, Ryan. I know every captain in the fleet. Well, with you at the helm of World Oil now, everybody's spirits are sure up. <laughs> yep. Welcome back, huh? Uh, well, everything seemed to... Work out fine while I was gone. I noticed that these uh, drafts took a brief dip when I died, but uh, see, it's business as usual. And uh, even increased some. Ryan, you're doing a fine job. Well, thanks, but uh, I was just standing in after all your world oil. Uh, look, there's something I got to tell you. Where's Iris, huh? Well, she and uh, Vivian went out to plan uh, the reception uh, that we're going to give. Uh, Dennis and Page. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Listen, how's Iris taking it, anyway? Well, she hit the ceiling at first. I doubt if she'll ever approve of the way Dennis's life is being conducted, but uh, I don't know. I hope that she'll resign herself to it. You know, the reception 
Well, maybe that's a good start. At least I hope it is. How about you? You coming? No, I'm afraid I can't. Uh, I'm going to be leaving Houston. What, tonight? Well, as soon as possible. Well, uh, but, uh, you know, what is it? Something urgent? I thought that the tanker situation was settled. No, no, this isn't another Mideast trip. Uh, Alex, I won't be coming back. Brian, you can't do this. Not this time. Well, Stryker, I didn't expect to find you here. Well, when I heard that Rena was closing up this house, I figured I'd better get in another visit while I could. I'm not uh, going to see nearly as much of you two uh, for a while, you know. Well, I guess you think I'm asking too much of her to give up this place. Why, well, I think for one thing, it's good that, uh, that you realize what leaving this place uh, means to Rena, that it's a sacrifice for her. I, th I think it's, a, it, it's good that you know how much she's willing to sacrifice for the man she loves. I'm proud of her. Yeah, well, I am too, Striker. I am too. You know, I can remember like it was yesterday that when, I, when I bought this place for Rena. <laughs> She was out on her own. It was her own little nest. Oh, I remember how she threw herself into it. She really was so happy out here. I remember she, she went around, she picked out every picture for the walls, every stick of furniture. <laughs> um, I, uh, I really wanted her and Kevin to stay in Houston real bad. Well, the trouble was I didn't try to see Kevin's side of it. I didn't want to, I didn't even bother to reckon how much getting this house meant for him. Uh. There was nobody holding the door open for him. I guess that's why he ran back off to Bay City. It's the only way he could see to get his freedom back. Uh-huh, yep. Yeah. Uh, I tell you, Strike, I sure appreciate you not messing with me and Rena like that. Oh, now listen, I want your marriage to be a success, Mac. Believe me, I do. You, you, you don't mind if I give you a little free advice, do you? No, go ahead. If you ever set about trimming up for somebody, remember, use a pocket knife and just whittle. Don't go hacking with a double-bitted axe. <laughs> oh. You know, it's a flat truth. It, since she's been around you a lot, Rena has changed a great deal. And all for the good. But th that doesn't mean that you should expect her to whip around and become a perfect little housewife. I don't think that's in the cards. Oh, shoot, Strike, I know that. I mean, I'm no fool. But well, don't you think she's at least shown that she wants to change? Well, listen, Rena's got a lot of good Texas stock in her, son. You know, the, the, the Bellmans weren't born with silver spoons in their mouth. We had to work hard for every nickel we got. Well, that's all I'm asking Rena for is a chance to get together a few nickels of my own. Well, I think she wants you to have that chance. Of course, uh, it, it's a little hard on her right now. I know that, but that's all right. I think, I think she's going to stick with you all the way. I know she is. Believe me, Stryker. I had those nickels in my pocket now. I'd want to buy nice things like these for her. Pretty things and, and soft things. Arena, now she's just going to have to sit tight and show some patience, because I just ain't built to take handouts. Now, <laughs> all due respect. I admire that in you, son. As a matter of fact, it's one of the reasons why I'm here today, because I figured if you and I could put our heads together, we could work out some way to, uh, well, to hurry up that waiting time a little.
Sam! Well, I've done it. I'm all moved in. Well, that was quick. <laughs> well, I'm a fast operator. Okay, operator. As soon as you get everything unpacked and put away neatly, you can start dinner. I think lobster, Caesar salad, souffle potatoes would be nice. Can hardly wait. Dinner. Uh, 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 have a heart, will you, uh, roommate? I've been, uh, I've been moving all day. That wasn't the deal now, was it? Whoever has a day off cooks dinner, right? Uh, right. Right. I'll see you around six. Bye. I only hope I... Hi. Here's that copy you wanted. Oh, thanks, Mickey. What's the matter, Sam? Oh, I don't know. I, I It's that thing with Justin. I... I I'm just scared, I guess. Well, you can always back out. He's already in. Oh. Well, you could tell him you changed your mind. That is one of the advantages of this sort of thing. One of the few. I don't know. That sounds so... fickle. You never promised constancy. <sighs> oh, it's easy for you to say. But it is easy for me to say. For you to be the party of the second part. If it were me, I'd be terrified. Thanks. Bye. Oh, Mickey. Oh. What's up, Doc? What are you doing here in the middle of the day? Well, you know my new job. This is morning for me now. You don't look very busy. Your doctor's work is never done. Haven't you uh, ever heard that? Yeah, right. Look, I came in for a medical consultation, all right? It's not for me. It's for my sister. It's about her health. Now, look, if there's something wrong with her, if she's sick, I have a right to know, all right? Now, I'm her brother. Look, Jeb, I wish you did know, but I can't be the one to tell you, so stop trying, okay? It's just respecting a patient's right to privacy. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, I'll guess. I'll make guesses, okay? That way, you won't really be telling me if I guess it, okay? All right, Courtney? Okay? Does she have a tumor? Okay. All right, fine. But less serious. Okay, what else can it be now? Okay, uh, blood pressure. That's it. That's it. All of us in our family, we all have very thick blood. You know, since, since passion to people, so it's got to be her blood pressure. That's it, right? No, it's not blood pressure. Okay, then it's got to be some other kind of woman's ailment. What can it be? Uh, uh, all right, the only thing I can think of... She's pregnant. Jeb, um, I really can't go into it. That's it, isn't it? She's pregnant. Huh? Well, that's terrific. That's just what Barrett needed. That's what they both needed. Oh, yeah, terrific. Since uh, he now knows about Ryan Connor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you, Jenny told Barrett about Ryan? I thought you knew that. So that means... Wait a second. B Barrett knew about that before he volunteered to fly that helicopter. You think that's why he... I don't know. Did that? I don't know the answer to that. Nobody knows the answer to that except for Barry. Yeah, but Jenny, she thinks that's why he decided to do that, right? Look, I have got work to do. No wonder Ginny's so uptight. I mean, a guy holds on to a dream for five years. He comes back and he finds out the dream's over. She's in love with another man, and she is going to marry another man. Courtney, Ginny is having Barrett's kid, isn't she? Courtney?
I feel. Not bad. Better than it looks like you feel. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just tired. Jeb was here to visit you while you were asleep. Everyone misses you. I um, noticed you weren't resting very well. I thought that since you got your memory back, your nightmares would go away. Mm. There's always more dreams. The mind's a ceaseless engine. And when you wish it would take a rest, just take a holiday. It keeps on grinding, thinking, thinking. Remembering. You haven't said anything about what happened. You know, you and Elliot Carrington and the helicopter crash. Another escape. Another failure. We uh, <clears throat> came down in a swamp. It was Cambodia all over again to him. Like some strange merry-go-round of war. You stay on it, you find yourself repeating what went before. Even if you manage to get off for a while, you step back on, the guards, the dead, they all come back. My lights went out pretty quickly, but I remember Elliot seeing a lot of it all over again. But all out of joint. It was one minute he was screaming traitor at me, and I expected to die again. Next minute he was crouching behind a tree and trying to protect me as if I was someone very precious to him. He whispered to me that I shouldn't worry that he'd get us all out past the guards. Poor devil. There we were in the jungle once more. Two lost children. But the reasons that the two of you were there, they weren't the same. No, they weren't, were they? Doesn't matter, though. I doubt the law can do much more to him than he's done to himself. I guess betrayal is always its own punishment. Yes, I guess it is. Well, you still haven't told me what happened in the crash. You keep badgering me about that. It's like you want a certain kind of answer. What do you want me to say? Since you and Ryan Connor counted me a dead man, I tried to oblige you? Well, you can lay that burden down. It's not so. That isn't it at all. Barrett, I want to believe you. I want desperately to believe you. But for heaven's sakes, don't protect me. Put it out of mind, Ginny. Just forget it. How can I forget it? Tell me what happened. What difference does it make? When the truth about you and Ryan hits me in the face, it's like... being sentenced to live across a river, but always being able to see your family on the other side. Even your own replacement. The family took Ryan as my replacement, didn't they? They all knew and liked him. Even Steve? Well, yes. We didn't think of Ryan as replacing you. Nobody took it that way. But life had to go on. I told Ryan that I'd always love you. He accepted that. That's why he's leaving. But even if Connor walks away, can we forget? We have to try and, and prove that our love can beat this trick that was played on us. Trickster seems to have had the upper hand for a long spell. And now it's our turn. Oh, Barrett. Our turn. It's got to be. We've got to believe in it. We've, we've got to work at it. I'm willing. Are you? Hey, look at me. P.O.W. Helicopter crash. 
This marshal is indestructible. I'm a marshal, too. He made me one. Jimmy. You know I love you. We can just get through this one. We'll go down in the history books. A man and a woman who uh, broke the back of death and distance. Lord, I hope we can. In my mind, I forgave you everything. I know, deep down, I know that there's nothing to forgive. Just give me a while to have what I feel catch up with what I believe. Can you do that? We have all the time in the world. All the time in the world, my darling. I'm sorry, Uncle. There's really nothing much I can do about it. Nothing much you can do about it. There's got to be. No, no. Not even the power of world oil is going to be enough to fix things this time. You see, Ginny and Barrett have decided to put their marriage back together. We haven't talked, but I knew what a rough time you've had over that. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a little rough. Uh, all those years I spent wandering around the world, and then I finally run across the woman I love right here in Houston, and uh, her husband comes back from the dead and takes her away. Terrific, right? It might not all be over. Not yet. Look at Iris and me. Hope takes a long time to die. That's right. You came back from the dead twice, didn't you? But no. You kept me here in Houston's gone now. There's no reason for me to stay anymore. Oh, you know, it's not like the Ryan that I know. To give up fighting. What am I going to fight? How can I fight Barrett Marshall after all those years he spent in a prisoner of war camp? Well, if anyone deserved a second chance, it's Barrett. So you see, Alex, I have no other thing to do but to leave. I hope you understand, all right? Ryan, I hate to pull the old family duty strings. But frankly, I need you. You talked a while ago about my being back at the helm. Well, I'm not in shape to be back there yet. Won't be for months. You're the only one in the family that I can give the wheel to. Except Dennis. But he doesn't know it. But you're the one. You do know it. Okay, Alex, I'll stay, but only until you're feeling better. This, uh, this just isn't my place anymore. Thanks, Ryan. I hope you know how much this means to me. Well, you're gonna have to let me talk to Rena about it. Oh, my honey slipped in just as quiet as a mouse. <laughs> Hey, Under sweetheart. all the work, too, you tinker around. Well, that's all right with me. <laughs> I'm all packed, ready to go. Well, before we head back to the cabin, I want to talk to you about something that uh, your daddy and I have been discussing. Well, I'm going to give you some privacy to talk about what I... what I'm offered to Max. And uh, anyway, i got to get back to the office. I'm, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, honey. Mm -hmm. Bye, Daddy. Love you. Goodbye. Uh, Stryker, good talking to you. Goodbye, really. Max. Good Bye -bye. being with you. All right. Okay. Bye, you two. Come on. Uh, well, uh... Well, uh, now, now hold on. <laughs> what have you two been cooking? Well, your daddy Daddy's seems to think that, um... Uh, I've been a little bit too uh, hard on this girl there, though I can't imagine why. That's you just... are a slave driver. I'm a slave driver? You're so... Uh, if Rena, I had hey, no, wait known just, that you just, just wait a minute now. Let me, let me say what, what, what happened here. Let me, let me just talk about it. Now, uh... He allows that if I'm kind of a, a rough old cowboy, then you're a thoroughbred filly. <laughs> Used to a different kind of a care and feeding. And that uh, if I'm going to take you away from this uh, here fancy stable, then I'm going to have to provide you with a house that you feel good about. Well, to make a long story short, he's, uh, he's going to uh, introduce me to some of them... Uh, 
little highfalutin bankers and co-sign me a loan. The idea being that uh, we can buy some land around that cabin of yours and plant ourselves a crop. Oh, where are you? That's the most wonderful game. Easy now, easy now. Don't even wait. I ain't exactly jumping up and down about bar joining the bar at Rich now, but uh, if planning a new home will make you feel better about leaving this one, and I'll do it, even if I have to go in the hawk a little bit. Oh, honey. Oh, honey, you sure know how to make a girl feel just terrific. Well. Darling. Yeah. There's nothing in the world that I want more for us than our own place. Something we made ourselves. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, come on. Is it Barrett's kid or is it Ryan's kid? Ask Jenny. I'm asking you. I told you, Jeff, I cannot discuss my patience with you. Look, she is my sister and Barrett is your brother. It doesn't matter. Look, we're not talking about medical stuff. Jeff, we're talking about family stuff. The subject is closed. All right, fine. The subject is closed. Differences make anyway. You know what they say. The husband of the mother is the father of the kid. So Jenny is having Barrett's kid, right? Right. Jenny won't even talk to me about this. Look, don't press her, okay? All right, but you're going to help her, okay? Medically, I will I'm not talking you. about medically. Now, you know what I mean, Courtney. I will try. But, Jeff, I can't even manage my own life, much less advise anyone else. Well, well. I thought I was the only person in Houston that was uh, a creek without a paddle. You know what? You don't open up much, do you? Well, a doctor's got to inspire confidence. It's part of my training. So in other words, if you don't know the right move, uh, you fake it. There's something to be said for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's something to be said for that, all right. You know, Courtney, when I look at you like this, uh, you look like such a lost little girl. Sometimes I think that you're, maybe admit that, uh, that you need me. Could you admit that? Huh? You maybe admit, maybe you just don't know? I do know, Jeb. I like you. I like you a lot. You're a very likable guy. Your problem is you, you, you need more self-confidence, that's all. Cut the therapy stuff. Okay, yeah. look. Suppose we had met a year ago. Okay, maybe we would have dated a month, six months. And then we would have parted friends. We'd never been more than anything than that. I... Why not just drop it? You know, you start off being honest. But then all of a sudden, you start lying to yourself. You know that, Courtney? Why don't you realize, you know, there's a whole big world out there. All you gotta do is you gotta tell the truth. Paige Marshall and Dennis Carrington. Oh. Oh. My lord, Iris must be... She must be...
must be out of her ever-loving mind. Sell us that little piece of land. Oh, <laughs> isn't it wonderful? I'm so happy. Listen, did you know that Paige and Dennis had gotten married? Oh, yeah. Look at that. It must have been <laughs> shotgun quick. This is an invitation Iris has sent in us for that reception on Friday. Yeah, yeah, Kate told me about it. She's just fit to be tied. <laughs> yeah, the house has had a lot of surprises for her lately. Mmm, hey, hey. Something sure smells good around here. Mmm, what do we got? Well, well look at it. You know, it is just amazing how, how well you managed to feed us, considering there's never any food in the place. It's just magic, honey. Uh -huh. Pure magic. One of women's many deep, dark secrets. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Well, oh, <clears throat> I don't want you to think that, uh, I don't appreciate those, uh, Deep, dark secrets. All right. <laughs> oh, Max, you caught me, honey. I, I got your dinner at the, the, the truck stop mm -hmm. down by the road. Honey, you can't expect me to cook dinner at everything that happened today. Well, a little slave driver, me? Darling, I promise you that when we get our new home, it will have my undivided attention. Oh. As long as it doesn't get all of your attention. <laughs> Isn't it going to be nice to have our own land around us? Oh, honey, we can build a great big house on that rise that overlooks the creek. Great big house? Mm -hmm. Well, then, we'd, uh, we'd best quit fooling around and start making ourselves some babies to fill that big house up with, don't you think? Oh, Mac, Mac! No, 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 Rough day at the office, Sam? You're crying. It's, uh, the, um, uh, onion. Why didn't you finish unpacking? I was slaving over a hot stove all day. A casserole de Justine, one of his favorite French recipes. <laughs> well, I can't wait. I'm starved. Who ate my last pineapple Danish? Bart? Okay, you get out now. Hit the road. 
the first time I've ever been given my walking papers just for meeting a Danish. It's the principle of the thing. Sam, you have been after an argument from the moment you walked in that door. Now, what is really the matter? I've been thinking about this all day long, and... Do you think this is a terrible mistake? Well, I've got my own idea about it, but what do you think? Is it a mistake? I don't know. Why would I stay so upset if it wasn't a mistake? Sam, our lives are turning the corner. Oh, yeah, to wear a blind alley. Well, it's new territory. I mean, there's bound to be a lot of uncertainty. Think of what adventure may lie ahead. <laughs> adventure? Yeah. I just don't think I'm the adventurous type. Justin, you've only been here three hours. And already, I'm afraid I'm... I'm so afraid you'll leave that... That you want to beat me to the punch and kick me out first. As they say at KVIK, I've got news for you. Please be serious. I'm being serious. I think I'm going to be around here for quite some time. Come here. I want to show you something. <laughs> oh. Uh huh. Visual appeal, wouldn't you say? Fantastic uh, bouquet of nuance, yet straightforward enough to be very honest, wouldn't you say? Uh -huh. Do you know what it's saying? What? It's saying, I am crazy about you and let's eat out. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. Wait a minute, man. You said you could do it. I know what I said. Hey, come on, Bernie. What are you worrying about? I know the boss wants me to cop an invitation to the Wheeler Reddit reception. Well, what's taking so long? I thought you forgot. I didn't forget. It just ain't as easy as you think it is. Hey, now, wait a minute, man. You said you could do it. I know what I said, but doing it ain't as easy as uh, saying it. I'll tell you, you know, I think the boss ought to know just how tough this little favor is. Matter of fact, uh, I might just want a little special consideration in return. Get my drift? Hey, no sweat. The boss remembers who helps him, uh, and he remembers who don't. Yeah, well, he better. Because I got to deal directly with the dragon lady herself to get that invite. And that ain't never no picnic. Uh-oh, here she comes back. Asked it again, I see, Billy Joe. One of your many business associates, no doubt. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it was. It's uh, tough keeping tabs on things. Well, don't let it overtax your little brain, sweetheart. Hey, I ain't overtaxing nothing. Oh, but you are, darling. You are taxing my patience. Now, let's get this straight once and for all, Billy Joe. My employees keep their mind on my business if they want to stay on my payroll. Now, you got that? Yes, sir, ma'am. Sorry about being on the phone. Okay. Well, I have a thought on how you can make up for this little indiscretion, though. I need some extra time for you today. Over at the Wheeler's house, they're giving a big reception for Dennis and me to announce our marriage. So what do you want me to do? I would like you to set up and tend bar. That is, if your other business associates can spare you for a few hours. Yeah, I, I guess they could. Uh, th this would be like doing a special favor to you, right? Yeah, I guess. Well, you know me, Mrs. Carrington. I'm always ready to do a special favor for the boss.
Texas. Starring Beverly McKenzie. Max, I want you to sign right here. All right. right up here. And then Kate, I want you to sign right down here. Okay? Here you go. Okay. Here's Ben. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. That helps. And Kate, the copy day. too, right here. Mm -hmm. Catherine Marshall and Maximilian <laughs> Decker. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute, honey. It's not through yet, especially my hands shaking like this. Oh. Okay. Honey, when you start, when you finish signing these papers, we are going to be the proud owner of the finest little spread this side of Kingsville. Not so little. This is uh, more land than my daddy owned in his entire life. Mm, and a fine piece of land, too. The Marshalls knew what they were doing when they applied for this in uh, 1848. Has it been in the family that long? Mm -hmm. That long? And if you think I'd sell it to anybody but a Decker, you got another thing coming. No, I didn't think you'd sell it to anybody, even if you needed the money. I wouldn't sell it to anybody. Except folks that loved it the way the Marshalls do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I love it, Kate. I just don't know how I'm going to keep up the payments on it. Oh, of course you can, honey. Those horses will be breeding no time flat. No time flat. We listen to them, honey. They ain't been in training like you and me. It's just going to be a while before they come to fall. Max, we need to be scared. Yes. Listen, the payments aren't due for a long time. Isn't that right, Daddy? Well, uh, that's what it says. Yeah. Well, that's a relief, isn't it, Max? Yeah, consider me relieved, yes. <laughs> I think that we should party now and celebrate tomorrow. What about it, Daddy? Okay, huh? Come on to the club yeah, come with us on. and we'll, we'll get ourselves a little celebration. Oh, come on. It's a big day for us. I know it's a big day, honey, but it's a big day for Barrett, too. You see, Jenny and I are going to take him home from the hospital as soon as she gets here. Oh, is he better now? Well, he'll have to rest up at home for a while. But as far as I know, they're releasing him today. Good. Glad Terrific. to hear it. Come on, Daddy. Going to join us? Yes, right. Right. Come I would on. love to, but i got to take a deposition at... Uh, my golly, I'm late already. Listen, you gotta let me pass this up to Party you. pooper! <laughs> Come on, Max. Okay. We don't need him. We can have our own party. Thanks, Kate. Bye, Daddy. Goodbye, Goodbye. you two. You. You miss now come good. <laughs> mm. Stryker, that was a very kind and generous thing you did, co-signing that deed for Max. He's a good man, Kate. None better. He was good. Well, I just hope he doesn't find himself over his head in debt. Well, he's not going to be in debt, and you know it. Isn't he? Well, heck no. Listen, I'd have given him the cash straight out if, if it wasn't for that darn fool prior to his. <laughs> Co-signing for him is just a way of helping save face. Oh, I'm sure that's the way you meant it, Stryker. But I know Max. And you're trying to save that pride of his but that's the very thing that's going to make him do whatever he has to do to pay back every cent of that loan himself. Hmm. Maybe you better bring another case of champagne just to be sure. All right, Billy Joe? Some shindig, huh? Yeah. Hey, look, we got our first customers right here. Oh. Here, let's keep counting. I'll be back. Well, oh, well, 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 if it isn't the doctor. Hi, Paige. Oh, well, nice to see you in our humble establishment. Oh, well, I don't know about humble. Just a figure of speech, Max. Well, what brings you into town, darling? I heard you'd become a rancher's wife. Surprise. Yeah, we just got through buying a ranch for Rena to wipe over. Oh, how well he understands you, you lucky girl, you two. Hello, hello. Uh, where is this ranch? In your backyard. Yeah, uh, Kate sold us some acreage around the uh, cabin that Rena bought. Grandma sold you, sold you some land? Yeah. My, 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 the times they are a-changing, aren't they? <laughs> she didn't tell you about it? No, no, why? She knows I don't care. <laughs> That's right. You never did care about much, did you, Paige? Well, not about the ranch, Max. I left it a hundred years ago for Hollywood, and guess what? I never looked back once. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You figured your career was more important than land or family or anything. But now look at you. You got a... Wedding band on your finger and whatnot? Well, say, what, what, what did happen, Paige? Your career too hard for you to manage? 
For your information, Mr. Ranch Hand Decker, I was that close to a starring role in a feature film. Um, well, then what happened? I uh, saw how you looked on the screen? I happened to look terrific, Max. Honey, I'm sure you well, did. Well, this friend of mine, who was a producer, who mm. was producing the film, uh -huh. said all I needed was some exposure to be a big star. Of course. Sure. And then, uh, Daddy died and I had to come home. Yeah, tail between your legs. Now, Max, I know that you've known Paige for years, but that's no excuse to be so unkind to her. You can see how, how hard it was for her to give that up. Yeah. Well, actually, it turned out rather well, because if I hadn't come home, I wouldn't have met Dennis, and I wouldn't have known how unhappy I was all those years chasing rainbows. <laughs> Honey, we got your invitation in the mail, and congratulations. Oh, thanks. Are you coming? Wouldn't miss it for the world. Good. Just well, to tell you the truth, I was kind of surprised to find out that Iris was giving you two a reception. Why? You weren't surprised when your folks gave us one. Uh, that's different, honey. What surprised me is that she was so anxious to to accept you as her daughter-in-law. Oh, no, no, you're the one that's hurting feelings. No reason in-laws can't uh, love and respect each other. Honey, it doesn't always work out that way. Well, this one does, really. Iris and I respect each other enormously. Okay, Alfredo has your table ready for you. Will you have a minute? Uh, I got something for you. Named it after you. I call it a trapper special. It's my way of congratulating you for trapping that poor sucker into marrying you. I don't think I'll thank you for that, if you don't mind. Uh, only one thing I can't figure out, though, is how come you married him? I mean, Wheeler's, he ain't dead. We were all delighted that he was still alive, Billy Joe. Yeah, but what about the inheritance? What about it? Dennis doesn't get it. Oh, I mean, uh, what's your next move gonna be? I mean, you gonna poison Wheeler, get your hubby back in the chips? Did it ever occur to you that I might love Dennis? <laughs> Are you kidding? You never loved anybody in your whole life. For your information, Mr. Wright, I do have a heart even if I don't wear it on my sleeve. But since that's something that I don't care to discuss with the hired help, let me just suggest that you get over to the Wheeler house and see what you can do to set up bar for the wedding reception, all right? Yeah, after the... Lunch crowd leaves. Good. Um, one thing. I mean, is it going to be all right if, if I don't have any special ID or something, like an invitation? Sure, all you do is tell Mrs. Wheeler's maid, Vivian, that I sent you, right? Yeah, but how's she going to know I'm me? I could be an imposter. Darling, I don't think anybody would want to impersonate you. All right, all you do is give your name. They're expecting you, all right? Oh, hi, darling. How are you? Doing the best you can under the circumstances. Huh, buddy? Will you just get back to work, Billy Joe? Okay, sweetheart, I'm all ready. We don't want to keep your family waiting, do we? Hey, Joe. Good, wanna... neither do I. Let's go. Uh, hey, Dennis. Congratulations there, buddy. Huh? Thank you. Mrs. Wheeler, you're just not listening. I am busy, Vivian. Well, I am busy, too, but I still have time to talk to you. You haven't changed a bit. Well, what about you? You changed your name, and that's about all. And frankly, I'm glad that we're not changed. And I think that these flowers should go over here. Oh, then where would you suggest we put the canopies? Over there. Uh, that's just what I thought. No, the flowers stay no, here. Don't yes, kill them. that stays there, and that's that. Not another word. How nice things look, darling. Oh, he <laughs> called you darling. That's so romantic. Will you hush? It's all right. 
My wife makes me feel romantic, Vivian. How's it going for you two? Oh, here? it's great. Mr. Wheeler, do you like martinis? Huh? Yes, baby. Oh, great, because I will fix you a pitcher of the best martinis you ever quaffed. Well, I'm going to make a whole pitcher will be necessary. Why not? Dennis's bride hasn't had any of my martinis either. All these people are going to come trundling in. Oh, are fine. fine. Uh, Page and Dennis, aren't they due here soon? Oh, Dennis said he was going by Gulf Coast first to see Elliot, if they'll let him in. He wants to tell him the good news. Good news from your magic. Every time I look at that cake, I feel like my heart is breaking. You've been under a great deal of strain lately. You never get enough rest. Oh. We'll see what we can do about that, won't we? We'll take a little nap before we get dressed for the Oh, reception. Alex, if I take a nap, I have to take care of all the final preparations. Vivian will take care of that, right, Vivian? Oh, certainly. You go and rest, Mrs. Wheeler, and you go and rest, Mr. Wheeler. I mean, you could rest together because, well, that's all right. You're married. Well, I sure hope it takes less than a year for Max to finish that house. <laughs> oh, come in. Here I am, Kate. Oh, Stryker. Hallie said that you had a... Uh... Oh, I got a deposition. I almost forgot it. Thank you, honey. Yeah. Hallie, will you tell that, that, uh, that fellow whose deposition I'm going to take I'm going to be a little late? You got ready to go get Barrett? Yes. Oh, as soon as Stryker's finished, I, guess, yeah, I just want to say goodbye. Stryker, okay. uh, what? Oh, uh, we were just leaving, Ryan. No, 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 uh, wait. Uh, I'm glad you're here, Kate. Uh, gives me a chance to, to say goodbye. Goodbye? Well, where are you going? Well, Ginny and I decided it would be best if, uh, if I left town. It'll make it easier for uh, her and Barrett to work things out. You did? Yes, uh, I told Alex, of course, and now I'm just uh, wrapping up some loose ends and saying goodbye to friends. And Alex is going to let you go? That's right. Uh, I'll be going as soon as he's well enough to, to take over. Oh, Ryan. You know, I've liked you ever since the first day you set foot on the ranch, dropping down out of the sky in that helicopter of yours. <laughs> You're a fine man. I wish you well. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'd best be going. Well, uh, you take care, you two. You be sure to tell Barrett how glad I am he's going to be on his feet again soon. Yes, I will, Stryker. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Kate. Bye, Jenny. We are all gonna miss you powerful bad, son. All of us. Thanks, Stryker. Yes? May I help you? I'm here to help you, good looking. Miss Marshall sent me here. I mean, Mrs. Carrington. What's your name? Billy Joe Rack. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were an imposter. Well, I don't think we have very much of a bar for you to tend, Mr. Wright. You just leave the bar to me, darling. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll tell you what. You just tell me what you got on hand. I'll see what else you need. And presto, one bar and one bartender. We don't have very much in stock. We just moved in. You have no fear. Wright is here. No job too big or too small. But, uh... I gotta know how many to prepare for. You got a guest list? I'll get it. There's over a hundred names on this list. It's very long. This? I've done parties ten times bigger than this. You cater a lot of Texas parties? Me? No, it's just a sideline with me. I got lots of other business interests in this town. Oh. Yeah. Houston's a go-ahead town there, Vivi. There's money just laying out in the streets just waiting for somebody to come pick it up. Really? Uh-huh. Oh. I'll keep a sharp lookout when I go shopping. <gasps> oh, yeah. Shopping, huh? 
You gotta go now? I mean, go ahead. You know, I can manage here okay by myself. Um, no, I better not because Mrs. Weaver would be very mad at me if I went now because there's just too much to do. Yeah. That's a problem when you work for other people. Me, I like being in business for myself. Boy, you know, you sure do got a lot of names on this here list. Come to think of it, uh, you got enough glasses? Oh. I don't know. Good. I mean, uh, why don't you go uh, count up how many you got, then I'll know how many I gotta, I gotta bring over. Well, you certainly know how to take care of everything, Mr. Wright. Yes, I do. That's why they call me Mr. Wright. Prisoners, not allowed visitors. Not even family. Where's Dr. De Silva? <laughs> You're what? <laughs> I know. I can hardly believe it myself, darling, but it's true. I'm married. Oh, that's great, but I just didn't think matrimony was your style, baby. How does it feel? Well, great, I think. I don't know. It's going to take some getting used to, but I'm going to get the hang of it. I'm sure you will, but... What about your career? Oh, let him eat cake for a while. Whose cake? Who's the lucky guy? Dennis Carrington. Carrington? Barry, it's not what you think. I wouldn't marry the son of the man who tried to kill you. Same last name. Same family. But not the same blood. <laughs> Elliot's not his real father. Oh? He only thinks he is? Yes, that's right. Hey, guess who his real father is? Don't play games with me, Paige. Just spell it out. Alex Wheeler. Connor's uncle? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That family tried to take my wife. You sure can't pick them, honey. So Jenny finally told you, huh? Oh, I swear, Barry, I almost told you myself. I didn't want to go on with that lie. Listen, Joan of Arc. This is something that Ginny and I have to work out ourselves. Yeah, well, you can't work anything out sitting in a hospital bed. Well, Ginny and Grandma are coming here any minute to get me out of here. Once we're home, we'll have all the time we need. Yeah, if Ryan Connor doesn't mix in first. He won't. Now, I listen, Paige, Barry. he's a decent guy. He's leaving town so that... Jenny and I can try to put ourselves back together. Wait a minute, he couldn't be leaving very soon. I mean, his uncle isn't well enough to take over full control of the company yet. I don't know about that. Jenny told me that Connor was leaving right away. Oh, that's interesting. That means that World Oil will be without a chief executive. Look, Dr. De Silva, I know my father will feel better if he sees me. I'm sorry you're involved in his trauma somehow. The visitors he had last week caused him a great deal of anxiety. But I'm his son. I'm sorry. Who's going to stand by him for the trial? I don't think there's going to be a trial. I've diagnosed him not competent to stand. Then what's going to happen to him? Well, you'll have to speak to his lawyer about that. His lawyer? My father doesn't have a lawyer, doctor. The one's been hired for him. By whom? By Mr. Wheeler. He hired Stryker Bellman, a fine lawyer. Wheeler hired him? Apparently he's quite concerned and he wants your father to receive the best care available and the best legal assistance. I don't understand. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. You'll excuse me. Thanks.
Wheeler. You and I have something to get settled. Dennis. What in God's name are you doing here, son? Don't call me that. As for God's name, I think you gave up the right to use that a long, long time ago. All right. What shall we call you? Burglar, then? Is that the word? I'm sure your mother didn't raise you to break into other people's office. Look, I'd say let's leave Mom's name out of this. But that would be a little ridiculous, wouldn't it, since you're about to marry her? Anyway, Mom's involved with what I have to say to you. I know what you have to say, Dennis. Don't bother. Hey, it's no bother to me. And if it bothers you, I'm sure you can call your dogs or your guards or whatever. But until they get here, you're going to have to listen to me. No guards. I'll give you five minutes to say your piece. That's more time than I give anybody else. Go on. Yeah, well, listen, uh, you may be Mr. Big around here and everything. I know that. You own half of Houston. Half of Texas, for all I know. Two-thirds. Look, I don't care how big you are. I'm giving you a warning. Leave my father alone. I may not have any money or any power, but I can get to you, Wheeler. I know just how to reach you. If you give Elliot Carrington one more moment of misery, I will. Oh, I will. I swear. Here I am. Okay. You all ready to go face Cyrus? Yes. And Wheeler, too. I don't remember ever feeling worse about a piece of my legal advice, Miss Carrion. I don't know that it really is. Oh, what the hell it isn't. I'm the one who pressed you to have Barrett Marshall declared legally dead. Can't you think that after five long years... Come on, and... Stryker, listen. Barrett Marshall is a good man. Uh, he certainly is that. But you know, when you and Ginny announced that you were going to get married on Christmas Eve, I had that declaration of presumed death pushed right through. In the eyes of the law, Barrett Marshall is... Uh, legally dead. <laughs> and, of course, the marriage between him and Ginny is legally over, too. Does... Does Ginny know this? No. I haven't mentioned it to either of them. They really ought to arrange to renew their vows. And... Legally, she's not his wife anymore? Well, it's just a matter that would be of interest to lawyers, but... You know, I'm gonna write myself a note to tell that girl. Uh, listen, Stryker, uh, just one last favor for me. Uh, please don't tell her until after I'm gone, all right? Now, Barrett, you know, the doctor said you could only come home on one condition. No unauthorized helicopter rides, I know. No, no, I'll let you take it easy and rest for a few days. Barrett. I uh, promise. Well, it's a good thing. Otherwise, we'd leave you here. Well, I've been away from the ranch long enough. Too long. And all the... Burdens have fallen on your shoulders, haven't they, Grandma? Just running the ranch, keeping the family together. I've had me some pretty wonderful help. Still, as soon as I get back on my feet again, things will be different. Mm, you have big plans, huh? Mm, nothing definite, just general direction. Look over the ruins of what Dad left us, and then start rebuilding. That's what marshals have always done. As long as we have the place, we'll always come. I always knew that if you made it home again, things would be fine. I won't say that my faith never wavered, but... It stretched a little thin, huh? There's nothing to worry about anymore. I'm home now. Let me just sit down for a minute. Sure. No, 
look well. I haven't been feeling very well lately. I never meant to cause you all this pain. It's not you. It's not Barrett either. It's the... Well, it's the strain of both of us now, isn't it? No. Well, there is a strain well, listen, there, you never it's... acted this way before Barrett came back, Jenny. It's not his fault. Okay, then it's mine. I should have left Houston the minute I heard Barrett was alive. I should have. No. Ryan, you promised you'd never leave me. I told you that was one of my worst and fears. I didn't, I didn't. You said you'd never abandon me. But look what my staying here is doing to you. That's only because I just don't know what I'm going to do. You made so many plans. No, look, Ginny, uh, I shared those plans with you. I kept them alive in my heart, but... Uh, what are you saying? <sighs> I've been living with the hope that once Barrett found out about us and got back on his feet again, he'd uh, look around and see that things were different. And he'd set you free to build a life with me. But after what you just said, uh, I realize it's just a fantasy now, isn't it? The plans that we made for our life together were not just a fantasy. But they are now, aren't they? Aren't they? I can't take this. I know, I can see that, Jenny. I'd do anything in the world just to take you away with me now, right now, today, but uh, if I did, you'd never forgive yourself for abandoning Barrett now, now would you? It's not just that, Ryan. I understand. It's... Look, Jenny, I know I've only known you a few months. And you're the most important person in my life. And you're as much a part of me as my own heart. And be like uh, tearing out Barrett's heart, wouldn't it? And you're not the sort of person that would do that sort of thing. And uh, that's why I love you so much. I don't want to change you. I just can't stand by and watch you suffer like you've been doing. You can't give me up. But I can. You said you wouldn't leave. But the longer I stay, the worse you look. You're crying all the time. You... <sighs> Barrett and I were, uh, were tearing you apart. One of us has to go. And since it can't be him, it's got to be me. No more fantasies. I just think it's better for all concerned that I ask Alex to take back control of World Oil. And I'm going to leave here and uh, get out of your life. Right, Jenny? What? I was just asking if you agree with me. The things will be looking up when Barry gets back on his feet. Sure. It'll be fine. Everything will just be fine. Come on, come on. What we got here? Uh, cream to all mine. Mm -hmm. All we got? Half a bottle? It's still good. First, still good. What else we got here? Chartreuse. attending bar at that family party over at the Wheelers. You're kidding. But I kid you, my buddy, huh? You dog. You got the invitation? Would I have called you if I didn't? All right. Hey, <laughs> where is it? Right here. Good Put man. Let's go. Hey, look. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. 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 H
Hold on. Hold on. Man, we got look it. We at got that. It. It's ruined. You're going to have to get another one. Hey, no way, man. I had a crazy time trying to get that one. Tried to steal it. I almost got caught. If you look at it, I can't give that to the boss. It hit the roof. Well, tough. What? Don't sweat it, huh? I mean, look here. We... See? It's fine. Just let it dry out a little, that's all. Well, okay. I guess he's just going to have to say he had an accident. Yeah, me too, man. He asked me how come so late. Do me a favor, Bernie, huh? Would you give me a hand getting stuff over to the house, huh? Well, now? Well, that's why I'm running so late, because I helped you with that invitation. Come on, man. The reception's going to start pretty soon, huh? All right. I guess I wouldn't mind seeing a fancy house like that. I haven't been in one of them since before I got sent up to Huntsville. For safe cracking, right? Um, yeah, that was part of it. Hey, uh, you wouldn't pull nothing like that again now, would you? Who, me? When I'm in, into making adult movies, I got all the money I need legit. I don't have to crack no face. Darling, will you fasten this? Oh, you look so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I haven't seen this since... The night you took over the club for us. I told you how very much I love you. Not in the last two hours. Let's really just fasten the necklace and stop, oh. please. No, it's all right. We're married. Vivian says it's all right. <laughs> I'll get it! Ooh, is she always that loud? I think so. Janice! Yeah. And Paige, his wife. Mrs. Carrington? Sure. I'm not looking forward to this. No one can tell you the radiant. Dennis, darling, how are you? Fine, Mom. Listen, Alex, I'd like to talk to you before the reception starts, Oh, right? Dennis, please, this is no time for an argument. Of course, let's talk out this, Larry. Hmm? Fine. Excuse me? Goodbye. Oh, Iris, everything looks so lovely. Oh, I really do appreciate this wonderful welcome into the family. We don't have to pretend when we're alone with each other, do we? Iris, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't love my son, and most likely never will. But then it won't be the first such match in history. You're referring to you and Elliot, I take it. Among others, yes. Too bad. There's just nothing you can do about it. No, isn't there? I told you not to underestimate me. Oh, I wouldn't do that. That's very wise. You mentioned Elliot. Actually, I was uh, able to make him quite happy for a while. And you will do the same with Dennis. For as long as you are fortunate enough to bear his name, you will be a faithful wife. Do you understand? You're going to make him happy. And you will not indulge in the sort of behavior to which you are no doubt accustomed. Well! You've certainly got that all worked out, haven't you? I'm not finished. After a few years, when you are divorced, and you will be, make no mistake of that, Alex and I will see to it that you receive a settlement, contingent upon how well you have managed to behave yourself during this marriage. Oh, my goodness, you have misjudged me, Iris. I'm just an old-fashioned girl. For me, marriage is for keeps. What settlement could possibly replace that? A reasonable sum. Oh, no, 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 darling. I just won't tease you. I don't want a reasonable sum. No, I'm sure you would prefer an unreasonable sum, but you won't get it. I don't want it. What do you want? I merely want to help Dennis take his rightful place in the world. As Alex's son and heir. And as the new head of world order. Oh, please. Don't look so surprised, Mother dear. That's not very different from what you want, is it? Oh, come on, Iris. Let's be friends again, shall we? Really, I think we would both do better if we just put aside our personal differences and work together on this common goal. Because if we don't, we could lose so much. So much that we hold dear. Don't threaten me. Threaten? 
I wasn't threatening me. I was making you a promise. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Texas. What about my father? What do you intend to do with him? Elliot? Yeah. Nothing. I mean, uh, we'll do whatever Dr. De Silva and the courts suggest. I understand you hired Stryker Bellman to represent him. Why do you ask? I just want to thank you if it's true. Forget it. No, I don't want to forget it. I'm grateful for your kindness. Kindness? I'm not some kind of philanthropist. No, I don't think you and are. I don't want your gratitude. Then why are you helping my father? No favor to you. It's between me and my conscience. Your conscience? I didn't know you had a conscience. Surprised? No. I'm disappointed that it's all hand in glove with an amazing lack of foresight. You know, your pattern seems to be destroy first and atone later. I mean, there was Mike Marshall and now there's my father. That's the point, young man. All right. I don't like you, but since we're going to be a family of sorts, and since you obviously make my mother very happy, I'd like to put a little end to our feud. I'm not saying we'll ever be friends, but if we can bury the hatchet and stay out of each other's way, life might be easier for all of us. And I guess I'd like to repay you for helping my father. See? You want to repay me for helping your father by staying out of my way. Are you willing to stay out of my way? Uh huh. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And being friends. That's right. I don't accept. That's not what I want. I have nothing more to offer. Yes, you do. What is it you want, anyway? I want you to train and take over World Oil.
Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas.